Good morning, everyone. This is Patty Wanamaker. I'm the academic trainer for Milady. I hope everyone is having a fantastic morning or afternoon, wherever you may be calling in from. Um, we are going to get started with our webinar today, which is teacher preparation. I just want to make sure that everyone uh, has uh, hit star six on their phone to mute. I also have you on an overall mute. Um, if you do have throughout today's webinar, on the right hand side of your screen, you will see uh, a little area for chat. And you may go ahead and type in uh, any questions that you have to Sally. Sally Munter is uh, assisting me today with the webinar, and she will be able to answer any questions that you may have. Um, any technical challenges that you're having, uh, go ahead and feel free to communicate with her directly. And again, I am so excited for today's uh, webinar. I think that this is an area that uh, we all need to spend maybe a little more time on, which is all about teacher preparation. So our ability as educators to lead and inspire our students to a sincere desire of learning is critical in the educational process. That ability must also be accompanied by us performing regular routine duties of effective management within our classrooms. Learning can clearly be made easier if our classroom environment is well organized pleasant, and conducive to education. You guys, the bottom line is this. The bottom line is this. The more time we spend as educators in our preparation, the more time we are going to be able to engage our students in active learning. It's that simple. You know, it's important. We need to organize ourselves. We need to organize our teaching materials. We need to organize our teaching environment, our students' information, our entire plan for the term that we're going to be with our students. In addition, any supplement resources, and then just the time within each of our class meetings. That's a lot to organize. So really, our first priority is to really grasp the importance of organization to both ourselves, our students, as well as our institution or our schools. Understanding the importance of these really is going to ensure that we are organized, we are prepared, and we are going to encourage our students to learn in the most effective environment. So with that, let's go ahead and take a peek at what we're going to really review today, some of our objectives. So our objectives for today is going to be we're going to talk about the importance of preparation and organization to, again, not only to our students, but our schools, and again, to you personally, to you personally. We're going to also talk about some techniques that you can utilize in your day-to-day -day operations at school that are going to help you organize the institutional environment, your teaching materials, as well as looking at something that's so critical is our students' first day of learning. So that's really where we're headed today. And what I'd like to start is talking about, it's already on the screen for you, is what is the importance of organization to us personally? You know, if we take into consideration all the elements that go into us gathering our presentation materials, conducting stimulating lectures, discussions, 
all of our activities that we have to organize, keeping accurate records, communicating with our students effectively and also in an effectively timed manner. When you stop to think about all of us on the phone probably are teaching more than one class. So with that being said, I think you guys can really see how apparent and how important it is that we all maintain excellent organizational skills. So let's look at this. First of all, when we are organized as educators, we are going to be able to understand really our students' audience. We're also going to be current in our field with our teaching techniques. In addition to that, we are going to be able to obtain the materials that you need as an educator, such as your LCD projectors, your video players, any screens, any supplies that you're personally going to need for that particular class. In addition to that, more importantly, I think that it's going to give us the time that we need to locate and use all of our course resources appropriately. With that being said, in addition to that, we can then begin to uh, review our course evaluations. How many of you now are having your students evaluate the course as you go through your process with them? I know as an academic trainer, that's one of my responsibilities at the end of my session is to have my students evaluate not only me, but evaluate the content that I presented throughout the day. So if you start to do this, if you're not currently doing this, this is part of our preparation, pulling our past evaluations and really looking at and considering things that are going to make our courses more effective. Also, it's going to provide us an opportunity to develop handouts and prepare our activities and any other resources and have them look in a professional manner that's going to meet the needs of our students. It's going to allow us the time to review our textbooks as well as any supplement resources that we may use for optimum course results. It's going to allow us the appropriate opportunity to set the appropriate tone and expectations for our class from the beginning. And I want to just say this with some emphasis. It really focuses on our set expectations being organized. When the logistics of our class has been well attended to, we can begin to focus on getting to know our students and creating a truly dynamic learning environment. So that's some of the benefits of organization to us personally. But how about the organization to our students? Let's go ahead and take a look at the organization to our students. First of all, when we are organized, our students can see what professionalism looks like from the beginning. We begin to model the professionalism. We also begin to help our students become more organized themselves. Remember, our students mirror our behaviors. It can increase our students' confidence in you as an educator. When we are prepared, our students perceive us as being prepared, We're going to have a higher level of confidence in us personally. It can increase our students' interest in the course, as well as the motivation for them to learn the new material. It makes meaningful information readily available to our students. It also supports effective learning. 
So if we're organized, it has a huge effect on our students, but it also has an effect on our schools or institutions. Effective organization has a direct impact on the level of excellence in our classrooms. This will affect our institutions in a positive way. Let's be honest, satisfied students are a very effective form of advertising for our personal classrooms as well as for our schools. So when we are organized, it has that trickle-down effect to our schools. It increases the value of the class as well as our school itself. It can assist us increasing student retention. It contributes to graduates who have successfully graduated and are now in our field, in our salons, in our spas, working and promoting our institution, as well as it adds an overall positive institution culture. It helps us create a positive attitude towards learning, growing, and building relationships with our students. As we've discovered, the effects of preparation and organization have a significant impact on our students, our schools, and to us personally. The end result of organization is this. It's effective and it represents our instructors or ourselves well. We are well planned and we are relevant in providing course information. We have satisfied our students, and the environment that we have created is conducive to a positive learning environment. So many of you right now may be thinking, OK, I personally do not have the time to add on more responsibilities to my plate. I am being pulled in all different directions. How can I personally start to prepare myself and organize myself more effectively. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few suggestions that you guys can begin to implement right away into your daily routine within the classroom. And I apologize if your, if your PowerPoint slides are not uh, moving forward. For some reason, they are a little bit delayed, and I'm trying to pull up the next slide. So bear with me uh, as we move to the next slide. Uh, again, general preparation is, is very uh, simplistic. And many of you may already be doing these things. Again, I apologize my slide is not moving forward. But I'm going to move forward with the, with the lesson and hope that this will, <laughs> will forward for me. Again, I apologize. Um, OK, so sorry. Um, so general uh, preparation and teaching is just this. You guys, number one, we need to know our topics. If we do not know our topics, we are not prepared. So how much time are you personally spending on preparing for your class? Are we taking the time to really get to know our topic. How about even reviewing recent developments within our field? Are we getting updated information? Second is get to know your students. Are you getting to know your students? That's really important. Are you taking the time to get to know your students? I'm going to, you guys, I'm going to pass my control over to Sally. For some reason, I am not able to forward these slides. And I apologize. Um, but I would love for you to be able to see the slides and do what you need to do. So bear with me while I move this over to my friend Sally. And she can then take control <coughs> of my slides for me. Bear with me, you guys. I'm so, so sorry for this. Um, 
I'm having some technical difficulties, and I want you guys to be able to enjoy the entire uh, presentation. Okay, I've just turned over the, the slides to Sally so she can forward them and get us on the same page. Again, I apologize for my technical difficulties, but as educators, we all know that Every class isn't perfect, and there are some times when we have technical difficulties. So let's let's get into our um, our teaching organization and prep. Again, I, I apologize. So number one, again, get to know our topics. Right, that's our first thing. Get to know our topic, and any recent developments within our field is really going to have a significant impact on what we're teaching. Find out again. Get to know our students. Find out the number of students in our classes. Learn as much as we can about our students. About our students. As we all know, today's learner, today's adult learner, comes to us in our classrooms with past experiences. And when we as educators can call upon those past experiences, that's when we engage our students. Sally, I'm going to ask if you can. Um, we are on the wrong slide. I'm, I'm lurking off the uh, slide topic that is general teaching, organization, and prep. If you can help me get that, would be wonderful. You, can, you guys, I apologize for, for our technical. Um, Sally, you're going to want to go, uh, instead of moving forward, you're going to want to go backwards. Okay, you guys. Second of all, know your material and your equipment, right? Know your material and your equipment. We need to look at our entire term that we're teaching. We need to prepare. Sally, thank you so much. We need to order adequate supplies for the numbers that you're going to expect in your classrooms. Also, how about a little additional, just in case we have any added students? How about checking out existing equipment in advance? And if there's any special repairs that need to be replaced, we have adequate time to do this. Personal little story, you guys. I was teaching uh, not that long ago on the road. I was using an LC projector from a different school. And I did get there early to set up, to prepare, and I did not check my LC projector. Guess what? The light bulb on my projector was burnt out. So because of that, I had to run around at school, find another light bulb, and ultimately I had to start my class a half hour late. So from personal experience, we need to make sure that all the equipment is working properly. Next is we need to assess the room in which you're going to be teaching in. Again, make sure that you are in this room and you are taking ownership of the room, making sure it's conducive to a learning environment. We need to organize your, all of your resources and your supplement materials ahead of time. Establish your record keeping methods and any tools that you personally are going to need in order for effective record keeping. Organize your class time and office hours for the duration of the program. Make sure your students in a well in advance know when you are available for office time. And last is we want each class meeting to have a devised plan that's going to relay the materials to our students effectively. So Sally, if I could have the next slide, that would be wonderful. We're going to keep moving forward, you guys. There's a few more suggestions that I'd like to share with you about preparation and organization. Number one is, again, keeping your knowledge fresh. Are you keeping updated? Are you staying current? Maintain an effectiveness in your classrooms. Using individual class time, make sure that you're going through the course term effectively. Provide optimal service to our students. How about that? Providing optimal service to our students is part of preparation and organization. And the last thing that's on my slide is preparing for your class time, your lab time, as well as any other materials. 
So with that being said, let's go ahead and look at some general organizational strategies. That will be on our next slide. I don't know about you, but I am inundated with data every single day. We are getting more and more information that's available for us, which is fantastic. You know, due to technology, due to the web, we are getting daily new bits of information. The challenge is, is that if we are not organized, we are not going to use this information to our most effective ability. So an organized educator is going to take full advantage of the information that we have at our fingertips, and we need to take ownership of that material and plan a system, an organization system, that works for you personally. It could be a hard copy. It could be an electronic copy. The most important thing here is, is that we find a system for organization and organizing this information as we receive it. Failure we are to do so really means just this, that we are not going to utilize all of the material that's available because we can't locate it. So it's very simple, you guys. Getting organized and taking ownership of our material is going to make our life so much easier. It's important to remember a couple things. That whatever we do in our organization process, that of course we always take into consideration our own school's organization structure. We don't want to alter our school's organization structure. So we need to work within those ramifications. But let's look at some things that we can do. So how about either making an electronic or hard copy immediately of that information that we find interesting, that new information, the information that we want to share with our students or our co-teachers, information that we want to share. So what that looks like is, are we bookmarking it? Are we putting it onto our favorites list? Are we even just putting a maybe a post-it note in, making a hard copy of that? With that being said, when we are making copies, we have to keep in mind the copyright laws. Things are copyrighted. We can't legally copy and distribute. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. How about creating a filing system that's easy for us, which basically means this. What would it look like if we create a large file for each of our classes, and within that, we have folders with inside each of those that have subtopics. Very simple. Also, in addition to that, how about us finding the information that's readily at hand when our students want it? Have you guys ever had a great article or something that you've wanted to personally share with your students and you just can't find the information. If we have that information at hand, it would be very easy for us to simply pull the file and get that information right off at hand. I don't know about all of you, but I personally do not have any PowerPoint up on my screen. I'm not sure if you guys all lost it. I've completely lost mine. So I am going to have to log back in, you guys. Again, I apologize so much that this is happening. Um, I'm not sure if you even have a PowerPoint on your screen. I personally do not. So bear with me while I pull this up and make sure that Sally has uh, a PowerPoint up as well. Give me two minutes, you guys. I am, again, so, so sorry that this is happening. Um, OK. So I'm working on pulling this up. And I'm not even able to pull up my password for some reason. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and finish teaching this without the PowerPoint. Um, again, I apologize if you are not seeing the PowerPoint. Sally, if you see the PowerPoint, please know that I do not, and I'll just have you continue to move forward. Okay, 
So again, having those hard copies at hand is really crucial. Um, number one, we've all been there. Our students have asked for a piece of information, or we think we have a great article we'd like to share, but who knows where it's at in our office. The key here is creating files within these files, having topics or subcategories where we can actually file that hard information. Next is scheduling office time. I've been to quite a few schools over the last six months and have really noticed that many educators share an office. And if we're sharing an office, it is important that we actually have scheduled time when we personally may work within those office confines. Um, you know, when there's too many cooks in the kitchen, it's very difficult. So it's important to make sure that we do have scheduled time for our office time. And that will help us prepare. From here we're going to go into looking about um, organizing our course as well as our student information. How do we begin to organize all of our own personal materials and on top of it, our students' materials? Well, first of all, I am a true believer about creating a section within our filing cabinet for each course that you personally teach. Organize the filing cabinet by your major topics of areas or your mo modules that you teach. Label them, and then you may go ahead and begin filing anything that's relevant. Newspaper clippings, internet resources, trends, anything that you feel would be of support to your current topics you may file in this. Also, I like to take personal note when I'm teaching. If students have great questions on a topic, I actually like to write down those questions. So write down the questions that your students are posing to you, and you can then file those questions as well into your course file. Easy reference tool. How about creating activities ahead of time? Wow. What would it look like if we could create an activity base and put them in a file ahead of time? So you are not personally up in the middle of the night having to create activities. These are already activities that are created. They are in a file, and they are ready to go. I also personally like to have hard copies of activities. That way I can share them with other educators or instructors. I also think it's important that we have our course objectives defined. So create a folder for each of our courses and have our course objective listed. It will make our preparation time so much more effective. Now, in addition to that, we also have to organize our students' profile information. As I said earlier in our call today, our students today come with a lot of past experiences. And our learners like to recall on that past experience. And that's when their true learning becomes effective. So how do we do that? How do we know everything about all of our students? What if we created a student profile? It could be a piece of paper. It could be an index card. But this is where we would write personal notes about our students, things that we can call upon in our classrooms. It will help us build a stronger relationship with our students. It will keep our students interested because it will show a true, sincere care for those students. Now, yes, I know each of your own schools and institutions have your own requirements for maintaining your students' information. And of course, we want to work within those boundaries. But I'm talking about personal notes as it relates to information that you may call upon them in classrooms. Example being, if you have a student that is currently working in a salon or spa as maybe a part-time receptionist, they have uh, salon experience. They know what it's like working with a client. And you're teaching something as it relates to that. You could easily refer to that student for personal testimony. So that's where those student files really come into play. In addition to that, we need to now look at our personal resources. 
These are things that you are personally bringing into your classrooms. Um, I don't know about you, but when I teach, I love to bring personal books, um, stories, magazine articles, things that I find that I think my students are going to enjoy. And I know each of you bring these personal resources into your classrooms. So it's imperative and very important that we organize these things ahead of time. First of all, you know, they could be publications, they could be articles, they could be newspapers, they could be CDs. Um, it's imperative that we organize these and we have them readily at hand. So we could simply create labels. You know, creating a label which basically identifies that it's your personal property. So this item belongs to Patty Wanamaker, and you could list your school. So Milady, and you could write maybe a personal thing. Please return this to, and that way you are able to keep control of your personal resources, so those things don't get lost. Another technique for organization of personal resources is color coding. So again, easy at hand. Everything in orange relates to technical. Everything in blue would relate to job resources. Uh, things in green relate to uh, personal behavior. And it would be an easy form of color coding to make things very easy to identify. The next couple things, again, if you can see the PowerPoint, is putting placeholders or name tag check in and check check out. These are uh, a way of us tracking what material has been checked out to each student. So it's an easy tracking form that you can create where your students would sign in that they took this book, this CD, this newspaper article, and then are able to return it by this date. It's a form of your tracking. And you may also do this electronic. Again, I know today technology is coming into our classrooms more than ever, and it's an easy way of us getting uh, control of organization. So we can organize uh, electronic as well. So same concept, creating folders electronically and then subfolders. Our next item that I'd like to look at is our environment that we are teaching in. So the environment in which our classrooms, uh, our class is conducted really has a significant impact on our students' learning and their effectiveness. Um, it's all part of preparation. And by us preparing ahead of time, we are able to ask, um, determine any of the assets within the classrooms or any flaws that we need to address. So first of all, it's the physical features of our classroom. By assessing the physical features of our classroom, we are able to identify things such as lighting, ventilation, any structural obstacles. Uh, recently I taught in a room that had a huge structural beam right down in the middle of my class. And I had to make sure that I rearranged the seating appropriate because there would have been a whole row of students that didn't get to see me teach or make eye contact with me. So going ahead of time and taking control of that. The next is the seating arrangements or the social aspect. You know, our classrooms are very social, and the arrangement of the seating is crucial. Um, are we able to make direct eye contact with our learners? Are our students able to make direct eye contact with each other? And how much control do we personally have over that room is going to be crucial. In addition to that, we need to take um, inventory of our equipment and our supplies. So taking control of, again, do we have the appropriate products within our classrooms? Do we have the appropriate equipment within our classrooms is crucial. The next piece of material that I'd like to look at is all of our teaching materials. You guys, well-organized, well-focused material Utilizing resources and tools really help us create a professional relationship with our students. And us being prepared with our teaching material is crucial. First of all, how about our lesson plans? Are we preparing ahead of time? 
our lesson plans. Each of your schools may be using information on a different aspect, but it's important that regardless of what lesson plan you're using, that master educators simply do not mimic or parrot a lesson plan. It's imperative that you as, as educators personalize those lesson plans, bring the lesson plans to life with your own stories, your own experience, as well as antidotes. This is where preparation comes at hand. If you're not preparing, how would you begin to implement your own stories? Um, the Ladies Course Management Guide provides you with complete lesson plans that support each chapter within our standard textbook. Each lesson plan is divided into key components, and those key components are going to assist you in your preparation for your upcoming classes. Next thing to look at is handouts or activity sheets. Um, professionally developed handouts really convey the message uh, that your course is well thought out, um, that the institution or the education that your students is receiving uh, is worth the expense that they are investing. Um, it really is about utilizing prepared handouts that are professionally created really provide a sense of added value to the course. Next is our audiovisual learning materials. We all know more and more that technology is coming into our classrooms. And we are being forced in a positive way to begin to bring in these learning materials. So being prepared, whether it be projected or non-projected is crucial, meaning if it's non-projected, it's pictures, it's photos, it's flip charts, it's boards, it's audio, or items that are projected, such as PowerPoints, DVDs, smart boards. We must be prepared in having these materials readily at hand. More importantly, we have to know how to work them. Now, you guys have personally seen from personal experience today that my technology was not working for me. And again, I apologize, but being prepared when things don't work smoothly, having a backup plan. So up to this point, you guys, we have discussed systems and techniques to assist you in preparing your classrooms. How about preparing for our students' first day? I don't know if everyone on the call probably has different years of experience. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if you are your first year teaching or you have been teaching for 20 plus years. Our first day to our students is the most critical day. And how we organize and prepare ourselves is crucial. So what I'd like to do is take you through your goal for your first day of class. Again, if you have a PowerPoint, that's fantastic. If not, please go ahead and just listen and take note. So our number one goal for our first day of class is really to introduce and provide an overview of our course. So providing students with a detailed overview of the course, its objectives, and how it's applied to their future profession really is about providing a content of information. It's about providing that connect where they've personally been in their life and where they're going. The goal of the introduction of the course should really provide students with the overview of the topics, the objectives, and any activities in which they're going to be involved in. Our second point for our first day of class is addressing our students' questions or concerns. Are we allowing our students the time on our first day to address their concerns? It's an opportunity for them to address concerns, uh, 
any kind of questions that they may personally have, remember to be supportive to all questions and concerns. It's in the interest of building a positive classroom culture. One of the elements that we have to really focus on is creating a safe environment for our students. And Q&A is an opportunity for us to do that. The next is, how about being prepared with some attention grabbers? Attention grabbers are really an excellent opportunity to create excitement for our students on their first day. They're attention grabbers that provide interest in the course overview. It may be a little surprise. It's about creating that enthusiasm on that first day. Remember when our students are having fun and our students are laughing, that is when true learning begins to take place. It is our responsibility as educators to provide a safe environment for our students. Also, what would it look like if we provided tips to our students on how we actually teach? So let our students know what your teaching style is like. Ask if they're aware of their own learning styles. Have a conversation, maybe it's a brainstorming session, about how your teaching techniques and their learning styles will integrate over the course term. Also, conduct an activity on our first day. We all are incorporating activities throughout our course sessions. It's imperative that from our first day, we begin to incorporate some type of group activity. It allows our students to become interested. It also allows them to be comfortable with the learning technique that's going to take place. So again, I want to stress it one more time. It's so important to remember that our classrooms must be a safe place for our students while providing a motivating and comfortable environment for our students. Today, you guys, we have established the importance of preparation and organization by you, the educator. We've reviewed the importance of planning and organization to our students, to our schools, as well as to you in your role, the educator. As we come to close of our webinar today, I would love for you guys to Think about some of the systems and the techniques and the guidelines that we have discovered today. And I'd like for you to maybe think about where you personally are at with your organization and the amount of time you personally spend in pre preparing for your classes. I'd like for you to think about what method could you personally begin to try on, let's say over the next few weeks. What my challenge to you is, is going to be is I'd like for you to write down what your commitment is. What area would you like to begin being prepared in? Is it you preparing all of your resources? Is it taking more time to review your lesson plans and begin to implement your personal stories? Maybe it was an opportunity for you to create a student profile about their personal experiences that they bring bring in. These are the things that I'd like for you to think about. I'd like for you to write down something that you would like to personally put into place. And my challenge to you is, is I'd like for you to post this someplace. I'd like for you to put someplace that you are personally going to see on a daily basis. And remind yourself that you've made this commitment to try on a new organizational skill. I personally, again, would like to thank each of you for participating. I want to personally apologize for the technical challenges that we've had, whether it be you not being able to see the PowerPoint or the slides not moving forward. Um, I know that you've personally taken the time out of your day and you are all so busy. I hope that you received some information that was pertinent for you and you're able to 
begin to apply some organizational skills into your personal routines. If you'd like to personally learn more about teacher preparation, you may go online to our faculty development classes. There are 18 modules, and one of the